Well, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I hope everybody this morning has remembered to pray for one another. Husbands pray for the wives and the wives for the husbands. I, you know, it's it's a day that we we should uh, remember these things, and it's a uh, it's a time of uh, discouragement. And uh, but we, as God's people, have the greatest opportunity. There's no greater opportunity than this to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. And whether it be two or whether it be a hundred and two, uh, uh, we can always come and find the Lord's presence. And so we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord. We want to try to read a few scriptures in the book of Hebrews this morning in chapter four. <clears throat> and the the, uh, the scriptures here are are referring back to the old time when uh, the children come out of Israel, uh, out of Egypt, and wandered around in the, de in the desert for some 40 years, and uh, we've discussed some of that here in the last week or two, but uh, we want to see a, a, some more things here that uh, we need to think about uh, because uh, they had a great opportunity. I mean, they had a great opportunity, and uh, it wasn't that... Uh, they didn't know what was going on because they knew what was going on because of the miracles that God had performed uh, every every day in their life, even the manna that uh, He sent their way, even the the uh, the fowls that He sent uh, their way, even uh, you know, can you imagine seeing the Red Sea open and walking across to, uh, and then doubting God? But the thing of it is, we do the same thing this day and time when we see uh, the sun come up, right? Or, and uh, the air blowing, the rainfall, and uh, we don't realize what kind of miracle it is, but, uh, and, you know, we don't take it to heart. But anyway, these are some of the things that we want to talk to you about this morning a little bit. So in verse 1 of chapter 4 of the book of Hebrews, it says, Let us, and of course the writer here, and uh, we uh, uh, think maybe that it was Paul, but anyway, regardless of who it was, wrote it. He was concerned, he was in, in uh, uh, speaking about himself, he said, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as to unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Good message right here. Because... Uh, profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, it sh if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Well, now the, the rest that he's talking about, <clears throat> they refer to a the Old Testament refers to the rest of going into Canaan. Of course, we know even as they went into Canaan, even after the 40 years and they they got went across and went into Canaan, there still was wars, there was, still was battles to be won. And so uh, another rest that we uh, can use from this is that rest that we have when we uh, die Amen. Uh, in this body and when we're resurrected when we go to be with the Lord there's going to be a rest unto our souls eternally. Amen. So these are some of the things but it says in the first verse it says let us therefore fear and listen people this morning it's not a, a fear like that every time you do a little something God's going to slap you on the back of the head and say you shouldn't have done that. But listen it's a fear it's a, it's a spiritual fear Mm -hmm. And he says here, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. And the coming short, you see over in chapter 2, notice in chapter 2, verse 1, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And we have the uh, problem 
of letting them swell. Right. And uh, uh, I, I've used this before, and a good example, I think, of, uh, of letting things slip is like a container having a little pinhole in it that's full of a liquid. And just a drop here, and a drop tomorrow, and a drop, and nothing is done about it, and eventually, it all drops out and that's, right. that is a slip that is a some of the times that we forget to thank the lord for some of the things that he's done for us. some of the times we forget to witness to people some of the time we forget this some of the time we forget that but listen these are things that we let slip and this is a way that we uh are pulled away from the lord and uh, we're not as, as close to him as we should. And so, therefore, there should be a fear in our hearts this morning that we are, we are letting things slip in our life. And people, it's, it's, it's very easy with the world tugging at everything that's going on in, uh, today to let things slip. Because right. we will put off things that we should do for the Lord in place of uh, 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 worldly things. And so here again he says, notice in verse 2 of chapter 2, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense, reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them who heard him. So here we see, oh, back in our lesson in chapter 4, he says, for unto us was the gospel preached. And so here's, we're saying here the gospel is being preached, the, the Bible is being taught, and we let so much of it, we let so much of it get by us because... When we're at church or when we're uh, listening to somebody uh, testify or whatever, our mind is on something besides what is being taught, right. what is being said. And listen, we let these things get by us. And even in our studies, even in our reading of God's Word, we'll find ourselves as we are reading and we're trying to read the best we can and, and understand and get what we can out of that. And, and all the time, the world has got involved in our minds. And right. we've got worldly thoughts on our mind. And this is things that's letting things slip. And we surely this morning don't need to let anything slip because... Uh, uh, God is not pleased in us, and, and, it, and it, it takes away from our uh, uh, us understanding things and, and being a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said here in uh, in verse two of, of uh, I mean verse one of it, he says, therefore, "Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest." And we know even in uh, in over in chapter 3, notice what he says here uh, in verse 11 of chapter 3. He said, and talking about uh, uh, the generation that was come out of Egypt. And uh, listen, uh, in verse uh, 8, notice what it says in verse chapter 3, verse 8. He says, harden not your heart as in the, in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They are always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. But now these are these are serious things that, that those people got into and and the the thing that the thing that really I mean you, you look back and all of the things that that was done, the the manna and uh, and the water that uh, and, and, and and crying out for water and and rebelling against God and all this. But the main thing was that He had promised them that they could go into Canaan and it was theirs. He gave it to Abraham and and it was theirs. And when they got there, when they got there, 
they went up and they come back with a report, hey, it's a land full with milk and honey, but we can't do it. And listen, that's getting right to the brink of God's blessings and then backing off and saying, hey, we're not able to do it. And right. ch churches gets in the same condition. Amen. Churches, churches do, do things and listen, uh, people can come together and maybe one or two will have a suggestion about something. All that sounds good. That sounds right. But, but can we do that? But can we do it? We can't do nothing. We can't do nothing as a church without the help of God. Amen. And if it's in God's will to lay on somebody's heart to do these things, hey, that's the way we need to go. And so this is the same thing that happened to those children there as, as they were up. Uh, as they went up and as they come back and all of them said no we can't do it with the exception of caleb and joshua mm -hmm. and so god said all right none of you will none of you will do it and so he he pulled them away and he let them meander around through the years and years and years and years into the desert and they all died right and the young generation come up and then Joshua and Moses led them up, and they got into the in, into Canaan, and uh, they 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 had that rest after after so many years in Canaan. Even they had to fight and and get other nations. But anyway, the rest was theirs, and so they were there and in that rest. So notice here now as we get into this verse two, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So we see here that they, those people that were out come out of Egypt, they were under the law. And faith was not part of their thing. Part of faith was not preached to them, but it was that you keep the law. And we studied some and heard Larry, Brother Larry preach some of the law and, and some of the things that they've done and, uh, uh, and some of the things that when Jesus was doing these miracles, the Pharisees and the Sadducees said, hey, you know, you're not supposed to do this. And the blind man, we talked about him uh, picking up his uh, bed and walking. And they said, you're not supposed to do this because it's the Sabbath. That law, that law was not sufficient. That law was not sufficient for grace, and so they had to, they had to have uh, uh, faith preached to them. And so here he says, but that that faith was not mixed in with that. So here in verse three, for we which have believed do enter into his rest. And how do we believe? It's not through the works. It's not through the law, Amen. but it's through faith. Amen. And he says here for in verse three, for we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And he's talking this morning not only of, of the works of, uh, of, of before Canaan and after Canaan, but he is talking about even before the foundation of the world. God done all of these things. He made a plan. He chose, he, he chose his people before the foundation of the world. All the works was done, and he said that he rested on the seventh day. Amen. And this rest was not for God, but it was to show the people that there is a rest, a promise of a rest for you and for me that are saved with him in glory. And so here's, here is, he says it was done before the foundation of the world. For in verse 4, for he spake in a certain place of the seven days <clears throat> on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into, enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Now notice, notice here in verse 6, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And this, the, this morning uh, tells us that Jesus Christ, uh, God's Son, did not die that all would enter into heaven. But he, he died for the sins of the world. But all that 
he died for would not accept it. All that, all that the plan here that was before the foundation of the world, God did not select all to be with him in glory. Right. Because, listen, uh, it never was that way because even, even if it was just one would keep it from happening. And we know who that was, Judas Isker, being a devil from the beginning. Amen. And so he was chosen before the foundation of the world to, uh, uh, to uh, dishonor Christ and to uh, uh, reject him and to uh, sell him out. So uh, we see the, in, in, these, in these scriptures here that, that this rest was not made for all. Right. And it was the same way when, when they went up to Canaan. It was the same way when, uh, when, when it, uh, people die. There's people that dies that is not, that's not going to go to heaven. It's just that plain. Because, Amen. first of all, it's because of unbelief. Right. And second, because I believe that God just didn't choose them. You're right. And so, this morning, these are some of the things that, that when he wrote, started writing this, this chapter here, he said, let us therefore fear. And we need to, we need to, uh, as Brother Larry has mentioned time and time again, we need to do some soul searching. We need to do it daily. Amen. Not, not just every six months or uh, every year and, and say, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But listen, it's a daily thing, people. And, and we need to, we need to, when we pray, make sure that we're getting hold of the Lord when we pray. Because that's, that's the most important thing in a prayer. Because so many times we'll go through a little rigmarole that ain't worth, it don't get no higher than the ceiling. But listen, when we pray, we need to make sure that we're in touch with the Lord. Amen. And, and, and getting His attention and doing it the right way. Because listen, uh, when we pray, God don't hear it. Jesus Christ hears that prayer. And listen, He comes to the Father with that prayer and presents that prayer to Him. And listen, we should, we should realize these things and know these things because that's the way that we need to pray is to Jesus Christ that, that we might that, that God would hear that prayer because he is the only one that can present that prayer uh, uh, we're not we're not capable of presenting a prayer to God Amen. because listen we're not hey we still got this sin in our body Amen. And, and and so the only way that only way that that prayer can get to God is through Jesus Christ he is our uh, uh, go-between uh, and he presents this prayer to God so this is this is some of the things that uh, as I was thinking on these things about fearing because we need to we need to think about this fear. Now, I want you to tell you something. This going in the Hebrews. Uh, I've done read it, but I want you to notice it again in, in Hebrews three and eight. I believe it is. He says uh, Hebrews three and eight. Read. Harden not your heart, as in the days of provocation, or when they provoked the Lord. And 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 so many times this that we provoke the Lord by these little uh, uh, so-called prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, we provoke the Lord so many times when, I, and you know, I have to confess that I'm a hypocrite. I have to confess to God that I'm a hypocrite and say, hey, Lord, you know you know me, I'm a hypocrite. Uh, and, and, then, and then in this flesh, hey, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot be completely true because Listen, I've got this flesh to deal with. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as, as he's saying here in the provocation, when they were, were, were out there and they were rebelling against Moses and against him, and, and he says, they're a stiff-necked, uncircumcised person at heart. Right. And that's the way sometimes I feel like that I get, and I, I don't doubt it a bit, I get that condition, and, and I have to just ask God, just please forgive me. Yeah. That's all I can do. So anyway, I want you. To, I want to read something else to you in a minute if I can find it. It's in the in the book of Psalms. Uh, I think it's in 90, 95, if I'm not mistaken. Psalms ninety-five. I'm Psalms ninety-five. I'm Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, in Psalms 95, listen. He says here in verse uh, verse 2 of 95, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with well. psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hill is, hills is also is his also the sea is his and he made it and the hands formed the dry land oh come and let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand Amen. today if you will hear his voice harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, with your, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. So I wanted to read that to you again because it's in several places in the Bible. And God made sure that we all heard it. So back in our, back in Hebrews now, notice in verse uh, 3. In verse 3 it says, For we which believe do, do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day of his rule. Of this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. And so, uh, again, he's just assuring us, he's assuring us that there is a rest for us, a rest for the weary soul. There is a rest with him and with Jesus Christ. And listen, all we have to do is have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and serve him. So, uh, again, in verse. Uh, uh, for for he's uh, in verse uh, six. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not into not in because of unbelief. Not unbelief. Again he limited a certain day, saying to David, today after so long a time, as it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? So they didn't get that rest. There, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as, did, as God did from his. And so uh, we see here that there's going to be, there is a time for he that, is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Now, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. And it's not works for salvation. Listen, but these, these labors, these works, should take place after salvation. And these are the things that are pleasing to God. And listen, like it was with the children over there, when he led them over there through the wilderness and all this, and he did all this for them, and he led them to the, to the land of Canaan. Hey, they were a type of, uh, uh, of his people, but they refused to serve him. And here we see here, he says, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So, you know, we need, we need this morning to realize that works is very important. Amen. Works is, it works is, is something that we need to concentrate on and, uh, 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 and, and have patience with other people and try to help people. And so he said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we see here that uh, uh, these works, uh, the uh, he says, for the, the word of God is quick 
and sharp and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so again, I bring you back to this word fear. We need to fear God. Amen. Because these, all of these things are, are, can be used to uh, get our attention. Uh, and one of, one of his children, uh, he's not going to let them, he's not going to let them run too rapid too long. And uh, he can, he's got several different things that he can use for us. And, uh, you know, I, I, I fear, I fear Amen. Even, even, even in when I can't pray and reach and get and get satisfied with my prayer, I fear it. And so uh, here it says in verse uh, thirteen up here, it says, "Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto him, unto the eyes of him which whom he has to do." Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, talking about Jesus Christ, with our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to be helped in time of need. And so these are some of the things that we need to, to, to try to keep uh, in our hearts and in our minds when we're uh, praying, when we're trying to serve the Lord or whatever. We need to, we need to, we need to remember these things. And uh, I think that... Uh, if we do, we'll have a whole lot closer walk with the Lord uh, and be more sincere with Him because uh, the little pity patty, little pity patty prayers and things like this, to me, it, I would think that they're stinking the nostrils of God. Amen. And uh, we need to be concerned more about our wording, uh, our prayers, and how we talk to Him because uh, I believe that He listens. I believe that every prayer that we pray uh, with concern and, 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 and desire to serve Him that the Lord Jesus Christ presents to Him and says, here it is. And uh, I believe that Jesus says, okay, they're mine. I died for them. And God understands that and He, he hears that prayer. And, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you pray and, and uh, it don't happen. But the thing of it is, we don't know what we need to do. Well, anyway, that's our lesson for today. I hope that something has been read, something has been said that will will encourage you and uh, and that you can that you will uh, have a greater desire to uh, think upon that rest uh, that he's talking about here, because there is a rest for our souls and for our bodies after they are brought forth and. Uh, glorified. There is a place for all of these things, and it's not—it's not no fairy tale. It's Man. not something that uh, uh, somebody has made up 150, 200 years ago. But it is truth, and the only way that you can accept it is by faith. Amen. That's it, by faith. And uh, uh, faith is—faith is what you have when you walk across a bridge, or going over water. You know that it's not—you you feel like it's not going to. Not gonna break, not gonna fall. That's faith, and you gotta trust. You gotta trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I, I think that's, I think that's the key to the whole thing. So uh, I, I thank you this morning for listening to what I had to say, and uh, especially the words that I read because they're true. Amen. So thank you all so much.